Hey all this is Greg again. I wanted to do a little quick voiceover kind of introduction to this video to explain what's going on in the video. When I first started recording this video the first two sections go over the method I was using at the time to trim my cases. Um, I have since uh, you see the image here I have since received this trim pro, pro three-way cutter head from RCBS and uh, it was out of stock everywhere. It took me months to get it. I had it on back order at Optics Planet and it finally showed up. But in the third portion of the video, I actually go over um, trimming with this with this three-way cutter head. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna leave the first two parts of the video as they were. Um, you, you know, those may be helpful to some people, uh, but if you wanna jump to, you know, to that portion where I'm using this new cutter tool, it's about at the eight and a half, nine minute mark of the video and you can skip over the first two. But I wanted to just kind of let you know, you know what, what you're going to see as, as you start the video. Now, this trimmer, I'm, I'm currently using it with the um, RCBS Trim Pro 2 uh, manual trimmer. But from what I understand, this is, a pretty, this is a pretty common thread that's on this tool. And it should fit most other uh, manual um, trimming tools as well. But I tell you what, this little thing, it, it's expensive and it, and it doesn't look like much. But man, it, it really take you know takes the effort out of trimming cases. This this little cutter head will trim your case, transfer and deburr it all in one one motion or one shot. And uh, yeah, I was do, previously doing both those extra, both those last two steps manually, which took a ton of time, and I hated it to be honest. So this thing is really going to speed up my reloading of two two three or, or any kind of um, you know mine's in two two caliber for two two three, but they make them in all different calibers. Uh, the good part is when you buy this little tool, you know, you get this little case part that holds the pilots. But, um, and if you want to change calibers, all you need to do is buy the separate pilots. And those are about 10 bucks. So, you know, um, so you aren't limited to, you know, having, you aren't, if you want to change calibers, you aren't, you don't have to spend 73 bucks every time for a new caliber. You just buy the little pilot head that goes with it. Um, and also in the third portion of the video, I'm going to explain a mistake that I was making um, where I was, um, I was, I was not. I was decapping my cases, pre, you know, ahead of time, and then resizing them later. Well, there was a, there was a portion, there was a mistake I was making during that process that I want to cover also um, in the video. Fortunately, it wasn't anything that that was going to cause my cases or my rounds not to work or any kind of safety issue. Uh, it was just a small detail, but but uh, something I, I want to mention in the video. So uh, at that, I'll uh, I'll let you uh, get on with the rest of the video. And again, if you want to forward to where I'm using the cutter tool, that's about the eight and a half nine minute mark. All right, thanks. Okay, in this video, I'm going to go over my new setup that I'm using to trim two, two, three cases. Now, in the past, I had used um, a Lee, the power trim that goes inside of a die on the on the turret, and then you would crank, you know, put a case in, crank it up into the turret, and then mount a drill motor on top of it, you know, and then spin the drill motor to trim the case. Um, that's worked okay. I've done a ton of two, two, three cases with that, but I was looking for something a little less fatiguing um, on my, on my arms and hands. That also, that, that power tool is supposed to chamfer and deburr, but it didn't really do a very good job. I was still doing that separately. I still am doing those two steps separately, but I'm hoping to change that here at some point. And I'm, I'm going to do that with the with the RCBS power, power trim too. Now, I, I found a gentleman online that had this, and he'd done a couple modifications that really made it, uh, really automated the process of doing two, two, three cases. So that was my goal with this setup was, was to get to where he was at. Um, but basically, just real quickly, this is sort of a real quick review. Um, you know, most of these trimmers are pretty similar. They, they've got some, you know a handler somewhere where you mount the caser on this end. You usually have a uh, you know a moving shaft here that's got a handle on the end. You put the case in, move this up, spin the handle. Um, you know, norm and this one I took obviously the handle is off, but you spin the handle and it trims the case. But it's all manual. T tough on the hands. So a couple of different routes you can take. Um, there's there's a, a guy online at DACAM, D-A-C-A-M, DACAMreloading.com that makes adapters that screw into the end of this shaft and that enables you to then put your, you know, put your drill motor over, you know, it goes into your drill motor and then you can use your drill motor for power. Uh, DACAM Reloading, I actually went there to buy the adapter, it's only 10 bucks. And then I got to his site and he actually makes these little things called power pods. And... And they mount, um, it, you can see it's on this piece of aluminum. The power pod comes um, with this piece of aluminum. And then you mount the, you know, you mount the uh, the trimmer on there. And then it, and this screws into the end. And it's a motorized. You can hear it's motorized. It, it's motorized. And then you slide, obviously, the same thing with the handle. You slide this up, you know, slide it up and, and 
and it motorized, you know, it automates the, the trimming process. It's motorized. A um, couple of problems, though, that I found with this. And one thing, while I was waiting for this to get here, I just happened to try my, my Milwaukee drill motor, and the chuck is big enough on this that it actually just fits right over the end. I didn't even need the adapter. Um, and so I actually started trimming the cases, and the, the, drill, the drill motor just lays over like that. And then I would just, you know, chuck up one of the one of the cases, hit the drill motor for a couple seconds, and boom, the case was done. Um, so I, I was doing that until this arrived, until this got here, and then I started trying to use this. But I quickly found out there's a couple problems. Uh, one is this doesn't spin very fast. The motor just does not spin very fast. It's kind of... I mean, you can hear it. It just doesn't go very fast. And the second problem is, is this doesn't weigh anything. It's very light. He probably uh, 3D prints these and puts the motor. I mean, it's very cool. Don't get me wrong. It's a very cool little unit. But because it's so light, you have to really, you have to really push it really hard onto the case to get it to trim. And the, the slow speed combined with the pressure needed to get the case trimmed, it's just a lot of work. Um, I immediately realized it, I was doing much better just using my drill motor. It was it was faster, less fatiguing because the drill motor is heavy. So, you know, it, didn't, it just didn't take a lot of pressure to push that in to get that case trimmed. Um, so this, along with, with the aluminum piece, was $100 to get this. Haven't decided quite yet what I'm going to do with it. But I would suggest that. If anything, buy the little $10 or whatever, you know, I think... Uh, the one for the RCBS was 10 the other's like $16. Buy the bit that screws into the end of here that goes into your drill motor, or if your chuck is big enough, in the end of your drill motor, just slide it right over the shaft, and, and you're done. That's all you need to do. So that's that's what I that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, this trimmer, the way the way it adjusts, like I said, most of these are pretty pretty similar. It's got uh, it's got a, a large uh, large adjustment ring on the back, fine, you know, a fine tune adjustment ring on the on the front here. The small one on the back tightens down to the shaft, and then the bigger, small, the finer adjustment wheel on front tightens down to the smaller, you know, the the bigger adjustment. It's a littler wheel, but it's, they they say it's for the bigger adjustments. And those just tighten down, basically to set it up. Ideally, you'd have a case, you know, a two two three case already trimmed to length. Put it in there. You run this up on there, tighten both of these down, both of these lock rings down, and then and then you're set. You've got your you've got your length set. Then if you're off by a couple thousandths, if you're off by a couple thousandths, you turn you loosen the the larger finer adjustment ring and turn it. I believe it's it's clockwise to bring it in and, and counterclockwise to uh, to bring it out. And then retighten it and, and you're good to go. So adjusting it is super easy. I've got mine set. Uh, perfect for my two two three cases right now sorry about that i mean bonk the camera so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to go ahead and uh, reposition this i'll pause the video reposition this with everything set up and then we'll trim some cases okay so we've got the camera re repositioned now right over the top of everything hopefully you can see everything clearly and uh, you can see i've got this uh this piece of oh, Try not to bump the camera here. I've got this piece of aluminum uh, fastened down to the bench here with a couple clamps. It's because I, I have limited bench room and I don't want to leave this mounted permanently. So I've just got a couple clamps holding it down. Now the trick the trick with this RCBS trimmer, the way this little spring-loaded uh, jaws work, you push push the handle down, pushes the jaws forward, slide the case in, and then you then you let the you know you let the jaw or let the handle back loose, and now now the case is tight. Now this was driving me crazy at first because I kept putting the case in and then having it tight and then trying to line things up and, and sometimes it wouldn't line up very very well. So I learned the trick is is to keep a little pressure on the handle down so the case sort of floats. You know, it's it's not completely tight. Let it float a little bit, then push the cutter up on it, then let the let the pressure off the handle, and now the case is tight and lined up right. Then you simply just uh, you know pick up your drill motor. <laughs> And it's done just that quick and so you can see how fast you can do these super fast Try not to bump the camera there but i tell you i've got the drill obviously the drills up on high and it really spits the 
spits the brass shavings everywhere. So be you know be mindful of that when you're doing this. But you can see just how fast that is. Now, obviously, I'm gonna I'm gonna need to go back and and deburr and chamfer all these cases. But once I get that bit, that that three way cutting bit that goes on here, I won't have to do those other two steps. That'll all be done all at once. So you can imagine how wonderful that would be. You know, come in here. Looks like that one didn't need trimming. Um, and be able be able to crank them out that fast and not have to, you know, not have to do anything else other than just this one step. As you can see, you can really crank them out. Doesn't take long. It's, uh, the drill motor is, is heavy, so it just really doesn't take a lot of pressure to push in on that to get to finish the trimming. Does it super fast. Um, yeah, so I think it's like it's a great setup if you're trying to save time on trimming two, two, three cases. Obviously, the missing the missing piece is that three way cutter that you need in order to you know to deburr and chamfer at the same time. One other thing on this, uh, the little pilots that they give you, the, the smallest one is the 22 pilot. That was actually, I was running into problems. It was still too big. I wasn't able to get my cases over it. So I had to take that little pilot bit out and uh, run uh, run a little bit of sandpaper around it until until my cases would fit over it. So I was having trouble with the cases not fitting. But other than that, you know, I said once I got the, the hang of leaving this a little loose, you know, put, leaving some pressure on that handle so that that case floats a little bit. Now, you know, and that just, I wasn't liking this at first until I figured out, okay, just leave it a little loose. Let the pilot center it, you know, and Bob's your uncle, just that fast. So, um, yeah, so I hope that helps some. Once I get that, that three-way cutting bit, uh, <laughs> hopefully sometime, maybe before Christmas, Hoping it'll come in stock somewhere, and then we'll then we'll really be cooking, because then we won't have to deburge and uh, chamfer all these cases separately. All right, thanks again for watching the video. Thanks. Okay, everybody, it's Greg again. I've got the camera situated over the uh, the final setup here on on how I'm cutting my cases. I first wanted to go over um, the mistake that I was making. I had mentioned that my 22 cases were not fitting over uh, over the cutter head of the pilot. Right here, this portion here, um, the case head seemed to be too small. It wouldn't fit. Now, when I got this bit and, and saw that my cases didn't fit this either, this this pilot head in here is very um, intricate. It has cutting blades on it. This isn't something you, you're going to want to try to mess with or trim down to get your case to fit over the end. So at that point, I called RCBS. And, of course, I had ordered the, the cutter head here. I had ordered the cutter head here in 22, so it should fit, right? So I called RCBS and talked to a very knowledgeable uh, lady on the phone. And within a couple of minutes, she had figured out what I, where the mistake was that I was making. Now, normally, um, when you have a lead die that, you know, that's ordered with, with the rifle cases, a 223, it comes with a 223 decapping pin. Um, now, since I decap all my cases ahead of time using Universal... I took this pin out of this die, this resizing die, and I was just resizing the cases without the pin in it. And what was happening when the, when the when the case goes up into you know on the upstroke, it resizes the case full size recase, but coming down, the decapping pin has a a fatter portion that widens the case mouth back out as you come down. And I was missing that, uh, so I wasn't I wasn't widening the case out on the downstroke. So my full size uh, cases were not fitting over the 22 the 22 pilot head because they were just a little too too small. So so now I added I added the capping pin back in even though I'm not decapping on this step I'm just using this for full full length resizing. The decapping pin is now you know pull um, when the case comes down and, and it you know it's opening up the the case head again. And so I was missing that, and that's why my my cases initially wouldn't fit over the two two, uh, you know, the two the twenty two caliber pilot bit here. And another problem I was having, um, and th and again, it, this didn't affect obviously didn't affect the safety of my rounds. All it did was make it a little trickier to put the bullet in when I was seeing you know when I was placing the bullet in the the cartridge. It was making it very difficult because obviously it was smaller. 
So the bullets were were hardly even setting in there. Now, now that I'm you know now that I'm full length resizing with the decapping pin again, the bullets fit in just just perfect. I mean they set right in there, nice and you know, nice and snug, don't fall out. So that's going to make it also much easier now to put my bullets in. So that's the mistake I was making initially, and like I said, it didn't didn't affect the rounds. Um, it just was a, it made it a little more tedious to try to put the bullet in the case. You know when I was uh, getting ready to uh, you know finish off the, the round. So anyway, yeah, and uh, I was you know I was glad to figure that out. I knew something wasn't right. Uh, the gal, like I said, the gal at RCBS, very knowledgeable. Within a couple questions, she had it figured out what I was doing wrong. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put that back over here in the turret. So now what we have here is the final setup. We've got uh, we've got the three-way cutter head that you see here. Um, obviously, I covered the drill motor in that in the previous two videos. Um, and I will include, there's a gentleman that, that has a video on YouTube, and there may be more, but this guy, I mean, he had the most detailed, perfect video on how to adjust this cutter head. And it's important to know. So there's some very intricate things to when you're adjusting this that you have to know about. And his video covered it in great detail. So I'm not going to try to explain how to adjust this. I'll include his video in the description. And then, uh, you know, you can watch that and, and learn how to adjust this. But basically at this point... Now I've got I've got some little uh, little bins of resized full length resized cases, you know, the, with the decapping pin. So now of course the cases fit. So now again, what we're going to do? Drop one in, kind of let let that float a little till I put the bit up on it. Hit it with the drill, and it's done. And you'll see the hopefully it's, you can see the shiny. You can see that it's been it's been deburred, no sharp edges, been chamfered on the inside. Bullet fits in just perfect, like so. And that is it. All three steps in, in just a few seconds. Um, I do I do leave these out over here because I do measure all of them afterward, just to, you know, just a kind of a safety check. But you can see how fast that goes. I'm having to reach around the camera here, so it's a little awkward. Bear with me. I mean, short of a Garrard trimmer or, you know, some expensive trimmer, um, you know, that, that does this same thing. I think, uh, again, $130 for the current price is about $130 for the RCPS manual trimmer, about $75 bucks for the uh, the trimming head. So what does that give you? About two, you know, you're right in the $200 range. And I mean, you can just obviously, like I said, I'm having to reach around the, the tripod and the camera here, but you can you can just fly through these. And I'm seeing you know, and you will you will make a mess. It's going to spit the you know spit the brass shavings around the filings, but I don't worry about it. I just take a vacuum. I vacuum and clean up when I'm done. It's no big deal. Yeah, just do one more here. You obviously you're getting the idea. Just that easy. It comes out with a beautiful chamfer and deburr. No sharp edges. I mean, just perfect. So anyway, that's that's the last portion of the video. Uh, if you did watch the previous two sections of the video, I appreciate that. Um, I thought, you know, like I said, I thought those may help uh, if somebody doesn't have this set up or is just, you know, using a different method. But uh, for me, this will be the final, you know, this will be the final trimming method that I will use from now on. It's very easy on the hands. doesn't take a lot of effort. Drop one in, let it float a little, bring the pilot head up. A few seconds with the drill motor and voila. Perfectly trimmed 223 case. Um, once I get done with those, you can see I've, after I check all the measurements, these will go back into the wet tumbler just to clean off the uh, the lube and any uh, shavings that are left. And then at that point, those will be ready to load. So, all right. So I hope that helps you out there. If you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments. And again, I'll put that uh, that link to the video on how to set up this this cutter head, so you'll have detailed instructions on it. But man, this thing is sweet. All right. I'll see you in the next video.